Hello, and nice to see you. As a rule, I make videos about walking historical local routes. This first episode is different, but the next ones will be in the same mould. But first we have to get to them. Trains from London St Pancras used to go to Scotland. This part of that network was between Derby in the south and Manchester and Carlisle in the north. There were several sections to this part and this particular section was one of two branches which separated Ambergate in Derbyshire. One continued north and to the east to Chesterfield and Sheffield and the other, this one, went northwest towards Manchester and Carlisle. Today, the line is a single track local line to Matlock then a preserved railway to Rosley, then from Coombs Road it forms the Monsell Trail. The plan is to follow the line where possible and find anything of interest along the way. So settle down with a beer and some crisps and enjoy the upcoming quest. If you would like to see other videos from The Owl, hey and who wouldn't, you can scan the QR code which will take you directly to the channel. Today, we're in Belper, awaiting a train to take us north along what was once the Midland Railway Manchester branch. Belper is a town of about 20,000 people, which is situated about 8 miles north of Derby. It's the last railway station before the junction at Ambergate. As this part of the line is very much in use, walking this section is not a very good idea, so we're boarding a train to Matlock. This is where we start our journey along the line which, until 1969, used to carry mainline trains like the Thames 4th, the Waverley, the Palatine and the Midland Pullman. It was heading towards Manchester and Carlisle, where it met up with the Waverley route to Edinburgh. Originally surveyed by no less a person than George Stevenson, it opened in 1840, serving the North Midland Railway. So, you may wish to pause this in order to take everything in. This is a diagram explaining the approximate layout of Ambergate Junction, which now, as of 2024, looks like this. Immediately after taking the single track line from the junction onto what used to be the Manchester branch, we pull into the now single platformed Ambergate station. The main line finished in 1968 on instructions from the then Labour Minister of Transport, Barbara Castle. When opened in 1840, this was an ornate station befitting the North Midland Railway's ideas of its own importance. In 1876 the junction was completed and Ambergate became one of only four triangular stations in the UK, the existing platform being on what was the Matlock and Manchester main line. It is here that our quest truly begins. So let's get going then. Next is Watt Standwell. Although opened in 1849 as Watt Standwell Bridge, it wasn't until 1853 that it was fully functional. Although the present station didn't arrive until 1894, it's now quite a busy commuter station, but we only stopped briefly before pressing on again. Thank <laughs> you. 
Just north of the station is an aqueduct designed by George Stevenson, which affords a great view of one of the myriad of tunnels along this route. Cromford, this is Cromford, change here for, well, just a very nice walk round really. This definitely passes as one of the prettiest country stations that I have ever come across. It's surrounded by more history in the form of the High Peak Railway, Cromford Mills, Cromford Canal than almost anywhere else that I've ever known. It's well worth a visit in its own right. Now, many people will know Matlock Bath as both a difficult place to get a parking spot and the home of a very pleasing plate of fish and chips. Matlock Bath has been a tourist trap since the Victorian era and is well known for the Heights of Abraham, Gulliver's Kingdom, the Peak District Lead Mining Museum and many good walking trails to name but a few. The station is interesting in that it was closed in 1967 Unusually it reopened in 1972 and it hasn't looked back since that day. Nearly there now, we're the next stop. So here we are, Matlock, where two worlds collide. We arrive on National Rail. Then, in a leisurely manner, we swap platforms. And we leave on a rake of Mark 1s headed by a peak, in this case D8 Penagent. The Midland Railway used to carry on north to Bakewell, Millersdale and on to Manchester and Carlisle with a branch off to Buxton. However the line now only continues as a heritage line, Peak Rail, which continues for nearly four miles before petering out into private farmland. Plans are afoot to extend this but they are in a very early stage as of 2024. Oh. 
And so we enter Darleydale Station. It is very striking with its splendid Gothic appearance. Although what you see today was its second incarnation. The station operated between 1849 and 1961 and then was reopened in 1991 by Peak Rail. Many nice little touches exist here with gardens, milk churns, a small museum, a manually operated level crossing and several other curios. All in all, well worth a visit, but we need to press on or we'll never get a walk along the Monsell Trail in. As the present terminus of Peak Rail, Rosley South was only ever a temporary station built in 1997 by the preservationists, and if their plans reach fruition, it will be superseded by a new terminus. As of 2024, that's all in the future. So now, because of the inaccessibility of some parts of the original course, we have to take a few snapshots of the available remains of the track of the old line for about three and a half miles before the Monsell Trail begins and we can get down to the nitty gritty. But that will be for the next time. It just remains for me to thank you for watching, ask you for a like and maybe even a subscription so that you don't miss the next videos in this series. So until then, have fun and take care.